Okay, hi everyone. So my name is Damian Dobrowski, uh, and I'm a cloud engineer in Clura. Clura is a European cloud provider that focuses on security and compliance and builds clouds mainly for heavily regulated industries. I'm also a part of uh, OpenStack Ansible team where we try to make OpenStack deployment process as easy and flexible as possible. So because of the industry where we work, some of our customers are, let's say, really sensitive when it comes to security. Mm -hmm. And we get some demands to encrypt all the internal traffic in our clouds. So today, I'm going to tell you about our journey to achieve that. Uh, generally, basic OpenStack Ansible knowledge is recommended. But if you don't have that, don't worry. I will briefly go through the deployment process, OpenStack Ansible deployment process. We have only 15 minutes. So today, I'm going to focus only on the, on encrypting the control plane traffic. OK, so uh, we started with a list of things that can be already encrypted pretty easily with OpenStack Ansible. So the first thing worth to mention is the traffic between API clients and AJ proxy, so technically OpenStack endpoints. That can be done fairly easy. Then we have uh, OpenStack uh, communication between OpenStack services and infrastructure services like database and uh, RabbitMQ. Uh, what can be also encrypted is uh, Nova live migrations in case you're using LiveYard. So when you live migrate instance between one compute to another, you can encrypt that traffic using vEncrypt. Mm, then we have uh, then we have uh, traffic between Nova console proxy and and com sorry and compute nodes in case you are using VNC console and for those of you who use uh, OVN you can also encrypt traffic between Neutron server and OVN Nord D so these things are already done so but the question is what else we need to encrypt to like fully encrypt the, the, our, our, our control plane. So to understand that, let's look at this picture. This is a typical, uh, typical traffic flow in AJ proxy. I used AJ proxy as an example because it's the most uh, common software to provide load balancing uh, functionalities in the cloud. And the only software that will allow you to do to configure everything automatically in OpenStack Ansible. Uh, so, and I also took Glance as an example. It could be any other OpenStack service, uh, but I chose Glance. Uh, so at the beginning, you have, this is a green area. This is communication between uh, API client and AJ proxy. So it's basically done. It can be encrypted. We even provide a possibility to obtain uh, let's encrypt certificate using uh, ACME protocol. This is done. But then we have a yellow area. This is communication between AJ proxy and the service backends. And this was not possible in OpenStack Ansible to encrypt that traffic since Antelope release. And we are going to focus on this yellow area. So going to the next slide. We started with the initial plan to achieve this challenge. First of all, is, uh, first is to use uh, Ansible role PKI uh, to generate uh, certificates. We already have that. We use that for other services. So, so the work is basically done. Uh, so it generates certificates, sign them with a custom certificate, certificate authority, and distribute these certificates across the environment. It's done. And also, we had to uh, implement uh, a feature to the role responsible for UWSGA configuration to be able to configure it properly to support TLS. Because most of the, the, uh, most of the services stay behind UWSGI. So 
It sounds pretty simple, and in fact, it is pretty simple, but only for a new environments. When you already have an environment and want to enable TLS backend traffic for this, it becomes way more complex. So this is actually our first challenge, how to enable TLS backend on already existing environments. So let's go through the OpenStack Ansible deployment process very quickly. It consists of three main stages. First is to prepare host for a deployment, set up host. Then we have set up infrastructure where the infrastructure services like database are being configured. And finally, you can deploy OpenStack services. Setup host is not relevant for this talk, so let's focus on setup infrastructure and setup OpenStack. And the most important point here is where the AJ proxy are being configured now. So it is during setup infrastructure stage. That's where all the services, AJ proxy services, are being configured up front. And also, I again chose Glance as an example to let you know what happens if you want to enable TLS backend for Glance, just an example, on the environment that is already running, the production environment, but doesn't have, uh, that does not have TLS backend enabled. So first of all, you define a variable responsible for this, and you proceed to running playbooks. So you go to the setup infrastructure stage, you start running playbooks. The first playbook you install, you, you, you run is AJ proxy install, and that's when you instruct AJ proxy to communicate with Glance over TLS. And congratulations, you just broke Glance. Glance is not available at this moment because the OpenStack service is not ready yet to accept this TLS traffic. So you basically have downtime. Then you go through the other deployment steps, then set up OpenStack, you configure Keystone. This is a uh, typical playbook order, the, the, the default playbook order in OpenStack Ansible. You run these playbooks until you reach Glance playbook, and that's when you get your uh, Glance service fixed. And of course, you're probably thinking you can change the playbook order, and that's pretty obvious, and it will help you, but in many cases, users may want to enable TLS backend for all these services uh, during OpenStack upgrade, for example, mm, and in that case, changing playbook order won't really help you. So we need, you need to come up with some other solution. Another issue is the variable scope, and I don't want to dig too much into the details. This is a fragment of, a, uh, of an AJ proxy service definition. You don't really need to understand all of this, but what is really important here, that to configure AJ proxy service for Glance, we need to access Glance variables. But because we run this playbook, this playbook for AJ proxy hosts, AJ proxy is not in a glance group. So technically, AJ proxy cannot access these variables. As, and as long as the defaults we define here match the real values or user has overridden them globally, then it's not a problem at all. Uh, but user may also override these variables only for a glance group, and it may lead to unexpected problems. And we have a solution for that since Antelope release. And we named it AJ Proxy Separated Service Config. So basically, what we did is to move AJ Proxy Service Configuration uh, out of AJ Proxy Playbooks to OpenStack, uh, OpenStack Playbooks. So let's visualize it. That's another comparison what happened, uh, what, what was going on before Antelope release and what is going on after Antelope release. This is the first difference. Previously, at this point, uh, we were configuring all AJ proxy services up front, but now we only do that for the base service, 
uh, and also some custom services that uh, you can define in your configuration, but they are not really uh, related to the OpenStack. It may be Prometheus or something else. That's the first difference. Then everything looks exactly the same. You go through the setup infrastructure stage, and you reach setup OpenStack stage. And that is another crucial difference, because before, we configured only Keystone at this point as an OpenStack service. But now, we, we configure Keystone and its AJ proxy service. And we do that for each other OpenStack service, basically. So that helped us to solve uh, both of the previous challenges. So we minimized the downtime during TLS backend transition. That's the first thing. And because we configure uh, uh, AJ proxy services uh, in a different place, we don't have a problem with variable scope anymore. And here we have another challenge. I mentioned that TLS frontend uh, could be encrypted for a long time in OpenStack Ansible, but what was always problematic is to, like, l l l let me just remind that uh, TLS frontend is the traffic between APA client and AJ proxy, but what, and what was problematic to actually uh, start encrypting that traffic. So technically, it's about uh, changing the protocol of OpenStack endpoints. And I picked Keystone as a most obvious example. Let's try to understand how OpenStack services uh, communicate with Keystone. So basically, all of them have a Keystone endpoint defined in their configuration file. And it's fine, but what happens if that endpoint changes? I mean, in terms of URL or even the protocol, you would need to reconfigure all these services. But you can't do this for all of them at once, or at least it's super hard. So you need to find another solution. And our solution for that is to, we, we use some magic in AJ proxy that allows our users to temporarily accept both encrypted and unencrypted traffic on the front end, so the green area here. Temporarily, during the transition, and after the transition, they can turn off the, the, this feature and able to, to do the transition without any downtime. So, so yeah. The solution for TLS backend transition was this AJ proxy separated service config. And solution for TLS frontend transition was to allow our users to temporarily accept both unencrypted and encrypted traffic on, uh, on the same port on OpenStack endpoint. There is one more major change we implemented in OpenStack Ansible during Antelope is available thanks to Jonathan Roser from BBC. So basically, AJ proxy maps are just files storing uh, key value pairs. And they may be used for several different use cases, starting from, uh, from raid limiting, blue, gray, uh, blue, green deployments. Additionally, they can be used to, let's say, link the a client IP to the specific backend, but we are using that for linking URL with AJ proxy backend. And this is the difference, because previously, all traffic on the ports 80 and 443 was forwarded directly to Horizon. But it causes an issue because some environments may not even have a Horizon deployed, but still we need to handle traffic on port 80 somehow, for example, to, to obtain a less encrypted certificate using uh, HTTP on challenge, right? So uh, we decided to change this behavior and instead just blindly route everything to Horizon, we put a base service uh, on the front that based on regular uh, on URL using regular expressions, routes traffic to the appropriate 
from, uh, to the appropriate backend. So let me explain the default configuration we have right now for the base service. Uh, first of all, all uh, Acme uh, challenge requests are routed directly to Let's Encrypt. Uh, that is later used by Certbot to obtain certificate. Uh, for security TXT, so sec security TXT is a file that allows websites to uh, to define security policies. Uh, all the URLs matching these regular expressions are are routed to to the uh, backend uh, that hosts this file as a, as just a static file. It's much simpler these days because previously the security TXT file was hosted by Keystone and available through uh, through, Hor uh, through Horizon. It was so complicated. Now it's just a static file in AJ Proxy and served directly uh, by AJ Proxy. All the other traffic uh, are routed to Horizon if it exists, obviously. Uh, and there is one more common case that is not enabled by default, but uh, can be used by the users. You can define your own, uh, your own rules here. And you can do this, for example, to uh, expose all the OpenStack endpoints on the same port. So basically, you can have Nova, Keystone, placement, everything available on port 443, so to say. Uh, and wrote it to the appropriate backends based on the URL you define. So, okay, so I know it was a lot of information, but let's try to summarize it. First point is that AJ proxy frontends can temporarily accept both encrypted and unencrypted traffic on the same port during the, the TLS frontend transition. Traffic to AJ proxy backends can be finally encrypted now since Antelope release of OpenStack Ansible. Uh, AJ proxy services are configured individually now, so AJ proxy playbook are no longer responsible for, configura for configuring all of them up front. And AJ proxy maps can be used to route your traffic based on the URL, but the usage of AJ proxy maps uh, it's not limited only uh, to, to, to this use case. You can, for example, uh, define your rules to apply rate limiting on your endpoints. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, th that, that's what uh, has changed recently in OpenStack Ansible. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe you have any questions? Yeah, let's shoot. Sorry? No, no. I, I, everything I mentioned here is already merged uh, in the merged to OpenStack Ansible, so you, you can find it here. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Okay. So thanks a lot for your attention. Have a good day. You can contact me anytime you want via email, IRC, or even here. Thank you.